the Diesel Podcast. Developing innovation in English as a second or other language. Episode 92, why we left Twitter and where do we go from here? Welcome to Diesel. This is episode 92. We are your hosts. I'm Brent Warner. And I'm Michelle Reyes. Hey, hey Brent. How are you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? Good. Uh, I see no one else is going to see this, but you have a new setup going on here. I do. Uh, well, I started backwards. I got a really cool keyboard first <laughs> when I've been needing a desk. <laughs> uh-huh. And you've been asking me to get a better setup for probably two years mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> or <at> longer. <laughs> so I got my keyboard and I thought, oh, I guess I better get a desk to go with it. And then last week I finally caved and bought the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that is a, that's the backward design principle of how to, how to get a desk is start with a, a uh, LED, with the key- LED backed keyboard uh, for your shelf. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, everything that's else going Japan. on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pretty good. I mean, we're wrapping up the end of the year and I'm here thinking how the heck did we just finish another year? <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, th- th- things are flying by. Uh, we're, you know, I'm still here in Japan, did a little uh, road tripping to see uh, some family and uh, check out some places. So I've been exploring a bit and uh, doing some work on my sabbatical project. We'll talk a little bit more about that in maybe a month or two. Um, but uh, yeah, things are going pretty well. And so the rest of the world seems to be falling apart all over the place. Uh, but over here, you know, um, it's a little bit ignorance is blissful kind of setup, I guess. And you've got great food posts and coffee uh-huh. posts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm trying trying to share all the food and coffee posts. So, uh, so yeah, let's. Uh, we're we're Halloween is gone, and you know I'm sad to say goodbye. Uh, but I didn't really didn't really get super into the Halloween spirit. I tried yeah, a little in bit. Japan. Yeah, it's a little different when you're overseas. I know I tried, but uh, but it just you know I was just mm-hmm. busy with other things. So um, so we'll see. I definitely probably will not get into the Thanksgiving spirit Wait, this time. Around. <laughs> I just have a question. Yeah. Did you finish your October? What was it the Godzilla? Godzilla Ween? No, I I totally crashed out on that. So it was like those movies are like great to have in the background as yeah. you're doing other things but like sitting down and watching a bunch of Godzilla mm-hmm. movies is really hard <laughs> and it's like oh my god and so many of them are like kind of weird kids movies where you're like mm-hmm. where it's just like this annoying kid that like kind of has semi befriended Godzilla like anyways oh, it's goodness. like some of the scenes are amazing but some of them are just like okay I'm gonna sit through an hour and a half of this so that being said the new Godzilla just came out in Japan and and it looks I pretty rad. New Godzilla. Yeah, it's called Godzilla minus one, and it's like supposedly mm-hmm. like right after I think World War Two, and so it's kind mm-hmm. of this whole like when did Godzilla come? Kind of a new origin story, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, I am going to try to get to that over the weekend, maybe if I can. Cool. All that said, we're going to uh, talk a little heavier, a little, a little bit yeah. more of a bummer conversation today. So uh, the so inevitable is yeah, here. Yeah, let's move over. <laughs> Okay, so Shell, the co- the topic today <laughs> is why we left Twitter and where do we go from here. Um, so yeah. I don't know if you've been seeing this. Well, what what have, what has your your experience has been with Twitter in the last year? Oh, I've largely been absent. Um, mm-hmm. I think I was at first. I used to think, oh, it's because I'm overseas and I, you know, I'm not going on there. But the reality is, it became more of a Oh, what am I going to see when I go on <laughs> mm-hmm. to log in and I'm looking for, you know, ideas from my teacher crew or my, you know, my teacher friends on there. Mm-hmm. But um, I just haven't been interested anymore. And I guess for me, it's like, well, you know what? A lot of people were kind are kind of sad. I mean, they're sad. You saw the RIP Twitter, Twitter is dead mm-hmm. posts and all of that trending. But I guess, um things don't stay the same forever. Right. And I just have been feeling like it's time for growth or change or uh, evolution. I don't know if it's an evolution. I don't know what it is. 
Yeah. But, so um, I've, I've felt like there, there's been a couple parts to this and, and we'll try and get into some of it. But basically, mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that was was a problem for me or the thing that's been dispir dispiriting um, for me is <laughs> that, uh, you know, even in teacher Twitter, which I'm mostly like, I, I tried to clear out a bunch of the, you know, politics and news and all the other stuff and i tried to stick mostly to teacher twitter but mm -hmm. i was getting one fewer and fewer quality things from teachers and really yeah. the sense of sharing that used to exist and it's like mm -hmm. hey i'm trying this thing out why don't you try it out is really been replaced with like this whole like I'm this a, I'm, yeah, yeah i'm an influencer kind of thing or like you know like just kind of information that you can't really that doesn't really sharing or helping that much it's more just like promoting something promoting and, something yeah. yeah and it's like and I don't mind promoting something but I'm mm -hmm. but I'm I'm not seeing the the community that used to be well, there and I, the I authenticity used... in when a colleague would share a really great tool or approach and and then you know um I, I guess all the really great teachers who harnessed the whatever that tool was got hired by the companies <laughs> and so it's like yeah because inevitably it's like oh now you're working for them oh now you're working for them mm -hmm. um but the quality or the type of posts or sharings do change because now you're they're also being tagged with like the company or you, uh, whatever catchphrase they have or yeah, hashtag yeah, they have yeah, going yeah. and so it gets a little uh it's less it's more fabricated prefabricated. i don't know what the word is but i just don't find it as authentic yeah, uh, yeah. for me at least no, I, I'm with you because it's, it's like uh, I used to always say and people people would, you know, get a little uh, they're, they're Happy. up in their hackles when I would say that like <laughs> I would get a, a, a that I got a better education through Twitter than I did through my master's. <laughs> you oh. know, like, Remember when I used to say that and like people would be like, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. upset and angry or whatever. And it's like, well, but that was the reality. And that is not yeah. the case anymore. Like this is not no. something where I could feel like I could go in and just pull the, you know, pick from the minds of really interesting and innovative teachers like that. That has faded away a lot. Um, all of this has come, of course, with, uh, you know, we're going to have to say it, it's Elon Musk's uh, purchase of Twitter and the changes that have come through with that. Um, all of this is well documented. So there's not a not a, you know, a big thing. But but I think we're one particular thing that is important to me on top of all of this mm -hmm. is that, you know, basically, it's become a lot more. I mean, his goal is to make it this unrestricted free speech platform or, you know, kind mm -hmm. of his goal, who knows what his real goal is. But, um, but, you know, the the whole thing here is that that then leads to a lot of domination by antisocial mm -hmm. posters. And so as educators, we know that there need to be controls on things for, you know, things to move smoothly. And so if you're trying to be a part of a society or part of a group, you can't just let everything go free. Like you can't let the students who are making problems continue to make problems. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with them. You have to kind of sort through them and you have to kind of, you know, we have we have the systems in place for all of that. And so one thing that I found um, from an article called uh, from from the tweets to hate speech, which came from uh, Montclair University Center for Strategic Communication, uh, it said it, it was uh, this really I, this it got into this idea that, um, you know, it's like that must goal is kind of similar to what 4chan does. And so what they said mm -hmm. was that uh, specifically 4chan serves as a space where online anonymity coupled with limited restrictions on speech has allowed virulent hate content to be shared without fear of platform response. 4chan has hosted a range of antisocial content, including the call for the abuse of women, hostility toward the trans community, aggressive anti-Semitism, and white nationalism. And so when you start looking at those things, you're like, oh yeah, these are all the things that are starting to pop up and, and actually have like statistically grown inside of Twitter. And so then we're sitting mm -hmm. here as a teacher going, well, are these things that I want to support implicitly by being a part of this community, even if my side of the community isn't supportive of that or whatever that is like, there's a conversation we'll get into it. But, mm -hmm. um, but I just thought it was really interesting because 4chan is known for being awful, right? Like it's, I mean, it's mm -hmm. the breeding ground for school shooters, right? It's yeah. the breeding ground for, um, it's like the dark web. That's not the dark web, but it's like, <laughs> Yeah. visibly on the web <laughs> yeah yeah and so it's like well you know is, is that something i want to participate in um and we'll get yeah. into it but i mean that's that's my for me that's a no yeah and you and i have gone back and forth on this for quite a while several months i think it's been 
a year, maybe even more, because we've seen mm-hmm. some of the changes. And um, another study uh, from this year in February, conducted by the Center for Countering Digital Hate, analyzed the uh, publicly available available figures on tweet impressions, which is what what um, Elon now calls them, right? Impressions. But he blocked and, access to that stuff now too, right? So this must well, have been... yes, because after this <laughs> happened, right, and he's su- he's suing them because anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but what you're what you were we were talking about 4chan, and just ten of these um, accounts that had been blocked several times and. Uh, actions had been taken because of the nature of their postings, he allowed them all back in. Mm. And just those 10 accounts, just those 10 accounts um, amassed 2.5 billion impressions. And it, the the study um, estimated that the ads being placed on those accounts account postings were generating up to $19 million a year just by those 10 accounts, just from those 10 accounts. So if you mm-hmm. think about, and these were like Kanye West, uh, um, what's that one guy, another, uh, the guy who's in trouble for trafficking girls. Oh, uh, Andrew Tate. Nate, Andrew Tate. I was going to mm-hmm. say some Tate guy. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know about Tate till he was trending and I thought, what the heck? Mm-hmm. And now, of course, we all know about him. Um, so that stuff really bothers me because I was starting to see when I would click on things, I was starting to see advert advertisements that now actually don't look like advertisements. So you have a hard time blocking them where I if I'm going to advertise where we post um, tools or strategies to my own teachers that I'm training I and my teachers may be uh, may not be new to Twitter or sorry, may be new to Twitter. I want them to also come to a platform that's going to be safe and friendly for them. Mm -hmm. And right now I don't feel like that's what I want them to be seeing. And so, no, I just kind of, it's sort of, um, yeah, Twitter for me has been dead. And I think maybe it's now the time where I'm. Yeah. And and part of me, I was worried about early on as saying, well, is it actually increasing in hate speech and all these problems or is this just kind of my imagination and people just talking and I'm in, in some sort of echo chamber oh, but there are gaslighting yourself yeah and, <laughs> but there are uh, there are mm-hmm. lots and lots and lots of studies showing that the active mm-hmm. hate speech has increased so there's this one uh it's written about in the LA Times and you can get access to the actual uh, data there, but it's basically from research from USC, UCLA, UC Merced, Oregon State. Um, they they proved that the daily use of hate speech by those who had uh, posted hateful speech tweets nearly doubled after musk finalized the sale um and then Mm -hmm. overall volume of hate speech also doubled uh site-wide so so you're seeing this just like feeling that like hey it's it's okay to be hateful to you know promote hate speech all of these other things and so again same thing hey i've got a platform on this on you know i've got some some popularity on this thing and then your students go in and see it and it's like well this is the thing that makes money off of hate speech is that something that you want to promote Mm -hmm. uh again hard really hard but uh but you know again ultimately again we yeah we stand um against that (laughs) which brings us to um so one of the one of the Topics we constantly talked about is where do we go? Where do we establish ourselves? Where do we, mm-hmm. what's the next place? And uh, you and I try every, everything, right? We're the early embracers of, of, of different platforms. And um, I found this really interesting panel by Ryan Alexander from the Future Trends Forum. Um, and this was a panel of higher education um names. Mm-hmm. And so they're talking about where are educators going after Twitter and I guess the issue, and I think it's been the issue for us too, is that the challenges of places that feel similar to Twitter, like Blue Sky, is still invitation only. And mm-hmm. so we're not seeing the rapid growth there. So there's not as much interaction. And then places like Mastodon, which have uh, better safeguards in place, I suppose, for what Twitter doesn't, mm-hmm. <laughs> isn't as user-friendly as, as, as Twitter was. And that's what you and I have constantly you know when we are on mastodon but we don't it's not not very often become yeah yeah, not very often um and other educators mentioned that they were taking time off platforms in general 
so that they could spend more time connecting with people without actually replacing um, the site. Um, and then Brian Alexander said that basically what, what's happening is there's some kind of reduction or a transformation. And I guess that that's why we're here. Yeah, well, and that's that's what we're talking about. We'll we'll get into the platforms individually uh, in the in the second half here, but mm -hmm. I, I guess I kind of want to just get into this question and a little bit of a discussion um, because I said, uh, you know, it's kind of how much of the act, how much do the actions of a platform need to align with your ideals? And so there was an article um, from Inside Higher Ed called "More Academics Take Flight." take flight from Twitter's mm -hmm. restrictions and alternatives grow. Um, and it said, basically it's one of the interviewees had said that like when he was looking at Musk reportedly firing employees without notice, not reportedly, I mean, it's happened. Right. Um, but they were saying, <laughs> Uh, he said, uh, you know, given the vast majority of my writing at that time was about treating employees better, there was a values based conflict for me and I didn't feel comfortable supporting that. And so this is a, a part that has really been interesting to me trying to kind of balance this out because I, I've been like, uh, I, I don't want to put any pressure on other teachers or anyone to say like, Hey, you should be, well, here, it's you not, shouldn't we're be not here, right? judging, right? Right, right. It's and, more of a, this is a very personal decision. Yeah. And there's a lot to it, right? Because mm -hmm. we'll get into it a little bit, but like, I guess I kind of want to get into this conversation though, because to me, I'm thinking, well, what is our responsibility? And this is you and me, Michelle, mm -hmm. anyone who's listening, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like don't feel like we're, we're attacking, like that's not the, or that we're saying there's the you and then there's us. Right, no. right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, but I am thinking about this and I'm, I'm really conflicted because it is a question of what is our responsibility as English language teachers? We work with international students. Mm -hmm. We work with, you know, um, underrepresented students, minoritized students, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then when we're sitting there on a hate speech dominated platform, right? Some people are out there saying, well, I want to stay there because I want to you know, counter the, counter the misinformation, right? And I, and like people need to be there to make sure that other, so it doesn't become its own um, hate speech echo chamber, right? And then, or on the other hand, should we move to a place that is more productive and safe and, uh, you know, a place that is, you know, welcoming and open and appropriately monitoring the difference between free speech and hate speech right and saying i mean hate speech is part of free speech but like but to be able to say like hey it's not really appropriate to say these things here right and so this is kind of i don't know where, where do you stand on this Michelle? because like what 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 should we be thinking about as um, what are what are we representing when we're when we're out there in the the uh, social media world i think that's it i think that when i started to second guess when what I was going if I was going to post a, a Twitter post that I had made to a diff, to someone else like mm -hmm. a student or a student teacher or a pre-service teacher or a teacher overseas I started preempt or pre uh, giving a uh a, a, like a, a heads up apology be yeah careful. there may be some some posts on there that's not what you know take a look you've got to be but it's like why is that why do I have to I never had to do that before one of yeah. the things that I, I'm is, sorry that I posted yeah. this on Twitter, but uh, you can find the link here, you know. <laughs> and I'm sorry that there's a comment that somebody made. And of course, yes, I could delete and et cetera. But again, um, it, it's almost like that that joy that I used to get from that free information that was given from other teachers who also wanted me to grow and, mm -hmm. and wanted to see what I made, what I did with their whatever they were sharing their tool and, and create this com collaborative community. Um, it wasn't, it's just, there's barricades to it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I know, I mean, I used to say the same thing as you, um, people ask me, where do you get all your ideas? I said, Twitter, mm -hmm. educator, Twitter, the twi teachers are like the, the people who are so welcoming and so open and uh, willing to share. And it, it just kind of um, has changed from that. And, and that's okay. I think, I think I, I, I started thinking and not everything is permanent. So I think that, that we're seeing that it's, it's a shift and I'm ready to make the transition. Mm -hmm. And maybe I was ready for a while, but I just didn't, I think uh, the podcast sort of, that was our, our first, that was our first uh, social media platform, I think where we first started at that time. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. We, sure we really, um, we were very active. 
yeah and that's how you and I connected and all, mm -hmm. all these other things oh yeah too, right? so, <laughs> um, so it's like it's wild and so so I think we're going to shift over to talk mm -hmm. a little bit you know I I was kind of pre-show I was talking to you a little bit about this idea mm -hmm. I've I've you know been in many of these other alternatives and we'll we'll talk them through a little bit um mm -hmm. but but I, I'll I'll say to, to even before we start is that like when I'm starting to explore these other platforms, it really does feel like this post-apocalyptic wasteland, right? Like, like, like I'm walking around in the desert and then I see some shadowy figure out there and I'm like, oh, I know you from Twitter. <laughs> and then I wave at them and they're like, oh, it's good to see you. And then and then the the dust storm comes up again and then they just drift gone. off and move in another direction and they the community is gone and we're all just yeah. wandering around looking for a yeah. a sip of water somewhere right? <laughs> and, and so it's it's a bummer though because it's mm -hmm. like this it's so much is lost because of well, all of this so much right? ha ha good came out of it right mm -hmm. and so i think well maybe we'll we'll talk about it when we head over to the transition yeah, well, I think we could do that now. So I think I think okay. we need to start looking at what these changes yeah. are, right? What what are the mm -hmm. places that we might go to? So, um, so Michelle, I know you've you've logged into some of them. I don't know if you've been. I've been. I have accounts on almost active. everything except for. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let you start. We'll get into it. Okay, so let's start with Blue Sky. So what what's mm -hmm. what's your impression of Blue Sky? So I thought I had an account on Blue Sky. This is the. Um, Twitter 2.0, mm -hmm. <laughs> the yeah, Jack Dorsey Twitter, <laughs> with, mm -hmm. but it's it's invitation only, so it's still pretty restrictive. And I've been waiting, and I thought I had gotten an invitation, and I never did. So I was so excited, thinking, "No, I remember getting one." Nope, but you yeah. have, you I did, do. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Katie, Katie McMore, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when she came on the show. So and then I asked, and I think it, you have to, I don't. How do you get an invite to get me on there? Uh, I'll go take a look and see if I can get you an invite. Um, but I'll just say like, it's been pretty quiet over there. Like there hasn't been much activity from my, from my experience. And mm -hmm. again, I'm trying to find people to follow and everything, but it's like, I, I just, ha it just hasn't picked up very much for me and I haven't spent much time in it. So, um, so we'll see, like, maybe there's some possibility there, but I feel like in the race that's currently going on, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not a very strong contender. Um, uh, but Mastodon, have you played with Mastodon? Yes, I well, oh, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Um, I did like Mastodon, but again, uh, if I wanted to recruit my friends over or mm -hmm. to, you know, new recruits, it would be it would take it would be quite hard to get them to start posting. Um, as opposed to when I used to say, Oh, you don't have a Twitter account. Oh my gosh, you just have to search for this, you know, hashtag. Now you can't mm -hmm. even do that because you can't search, you have to have an account. Yeah. yeah. So um, there are more educators there. I think that I don't know that they're as active. Um, yeah. When I, anytime I log in, I do see new posts, but it's nothing that um, keeps me there long enough to call myself yet a tutor. Is that what tutor. they do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the concept <laughs> behind Mastodon. Like yeah. it is 100% in my wheelhouse in terms of like the kind of the punk DIY ethic. Like it's making things work. It's about, you know, just, just, you know, it's a distributed platform. No one really controls it. All of those things are awesome. And they just did not make it accessible. Like it's just hard mm -hmm. to use. And, and it, it you know, Anyone who's listening that uses it, they're going to be like, no, no, you just have to do this. And it's like, you just have to do these 25 steps in order to <laughs> just start working with it. It's like, no, it needs to be one step, right? Like it needs to be log in and start, right? <laughs> like, and so, um, so as much as I love the concept behind it, if they could clear out a ton of the issues with it, <laughs> really simplify it, I think it had has the potential to really take off, but but I'm also a little bit concerned now that just the the construction of it doesn't allow for you know the backward simplification of it because it's decentralized and so um, so I don't know I don't know what's really going to happen with it but uh, but on the other hand we do have some really a really really simple one um, made by okay. Meta which is Threads Threads yeah Threads. and you know I've been tempted. I was trying not to because I have kind of cut down on Facebook and I, you know, Facebook is okay. It's mm -hmm. gotten a little bit less 
controversial for like um, my my feed's a mess I don't know what I get why I get it and then I'm getting stuff that I don't even subscribe to so I just kind of give up on it uh but it keeps our diesel Facebook account alive <laughs> um but on Instagram I noticed that they're now featuring comments from threads yeah and yeah. it's actually doing a pretty good job of guessing what kind of stuff I might be interested in because I've clicked on several and normally I would have been like threads and I'm not interested, but I thought, no, you know what? That I recognize that name. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have a threads account. What's I your do. experience? Yeah. I, I like it quite a bit, actually. I, I you know, like I, I'm actually shocked because I'm not a very big meta fan, yeah. you know, like I don't, mm -hmm. you know, like Facebook, I'd logged off a long time ago. I've been on Instagram the whole time and, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, it, you know, and it was hard because I thought about leaving it for a long time too, just because I didn't mm -hmm. really like what, it, what uh, Facebook and what Meta was doing how in it, general, yeah. how it runs. But, but after all of this, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm changing gears and going, well, like maybe, you know, if it's, if it's the lesser of two evils or if it's, you know, a, a jet, like they're kind of cleaning up some of the things that were issues and threads is still pretty bare bones. It's missing a lot of key features. And in particular for me, the one that's really what's helped, uh, stopping me from really using it is that uh, you can't search um, in, oh. uh, you can't search outside of English speaking countries and Spanish speaking countries. So like, so they have the oh, search okay. function. You can search for people's names, but I can't go in and actually search for topics that I'm interested in. And so I just have to wait for things to pop up that I'm interested in it because I'm in Japan. And so they don't allow me, even though I'm an English speaker, mm -hmm. I can't go in there and search. Um, and so that's really holding me back. And they're, they're prioritizing development of other things. And I guess they must have a strategy for it. I don't, I don't understand it because they're like, oh, it's really important that we put these voice messages in here, but we don't have lists or DMs, you know, like all of these things that they clearly have the ability to do because all of these features are inside of Instagram in other ways. Right. But, yeah. um, but anyways, they, uh, it, it is a pretty good community so far. It seems like it seems like it's growing and building. And even the stuff that they're suggesting to me on their algorithms tend to be decent. Uh, not tons of educator stuff yet, but I'm I'm out there searching for it. I'm trying to find things. And so I think Threads maybe has some real potential, but it might still be a little bit down the line. Well, that might just get me to download it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's uh, at this it's point functional. Yeah, I like the the comment, like the comment. Um, I miss the commenting and the thread. Yeah, the threads. Yeah, the community um, seems to be pretty good there. So I actually thought uh, I was gonna quit Instagram because I wasn't interested in on Instagram once it became this like Snapchat wannabe mm -hmm, short mm -hmm. stories and whatever else they had on there. But I find my I find find that now that I've left Twitter and I've sort of stayed away from other platforms. Um, Instagram has been the place where I go and I'm not posting as much, but I am consuming more. Yeah. Um, where before I loved to post, but I, I I didn't like seeing all the ads. I still get a lot of ads, but now I, I sort of face that I better tell it what kind of things I do like. So I don't get, I was getting like Rogaine stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess the people around in my neighborhood must, that's what must be what they're searching for because it, you know, it <laughs> locates to see what people in your area are searching. For. Okay. I better tell it that I like sure. uh, gaming stuff. And so, yeah, that's how I got my keyboard incidentally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Their ads, their ads do tend to be pretty decent. I mean, they're better at, at focusing those ads than anything else, I think, but, but you're right. It's kind of like, uh, well, um, and, and I have those mixed feelings too. Uh, it can be fun, but it can also be a time suck. And I really wish they oh, would yeah. kind of slow down on the suggested posts and uh, really, yes. you know, like everybody, and I know they say this is not what, you know, what actually drives things, but everybody I know that talks about any of these things, just like, just let me see everything from the people that I follow in the order mm -hmm. that they posted it reverse chronological order. Mm -hmm. Like that's all, all anybody wants from any social media platform, never given it. Uh, it would be nice if they did that. Yeah. But... And it doesn't matter how many times you say, I've seen this post too many times mm -hmm. and then it'll say, it won't show you this post again, but it sure will show you someone who collaborated with that company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I, I don't like Temu. I'm not going to support Temu on principle. <laughs> and I keep saying all these Temu collaborations. Temu's all over the place, yeah. Um, 
Okay, so uh, that's Instagram. <laughs> yeah, Instagram, Facebook. I still am not back on Facebook properly. Um, you see, you you'll be. You think you'll be back? Well, I don't know. I'm I'm wondering a little bit about it just for cross posting from uh, you know, because because a lot of the work that I'm doing around mm. AI might be useful to people on mm -hmm. Facebook. That, yeah. That's kind of why I'm thinking about it. Is like. I I get the feeling that there might be people out there that are really need help with AI and ESL stuff. And then if there's a still a big teacher community on Facebook, then maybe I should build that platform to be able to post to it. Um, I'm not totally sure, but I'm yeah. it's something I'm thinking about anyways, because I don't, I don't know how big that conversation is going over there, but people I, are still I struggling. I think it's worth, yeah, I think it's worth going in there because the higher ed um community is quite active yeah. and and where before i think a few years ago you and i were constantly talking about how oh <laughs> there uh, all of the teachers are over on twitter and this is why we wanted people to join twitter but now it's sort of shifted and maybe you have a new generation of teachers out there who now were exposed to facebook differently because maybe they joined instagram first and then they became facebook uh account uh holders mm -hmm. so um you know the population or the audience shifts too because uh, i've i've seen that people are interacting um with certain posts that i make on there from our diesel podcast and then also clicking on other educational forums where i found oh that the the chats are actually or you know conversations are actually uh, kind of lively they're going back and forth so yeah. it's worth it okay. um so anyway, the, uh, the one that I still resist <laughs> <laughs> because it reminded me of a Facebook for old people, <laughs> but now I'm one of those old people is LinkedIn and I still don't get it. I don't. I love I LinkedIn. Get it. It's I like, get it. it's, I know. I, I, and I, I see these posts on, you know, online people are like, oh, it's LinkedIn is the worst. And I'm like. I but used it, to not get it, but like once I got on it and I started just being in with my colleagues at school and then other mm -hmm. professors, like community college scene there is great. Yeah. The uh, Yeah, maybe it depends on what it, yeah. Yeah, it could, it could totally depend. A little yeah. bit of ESL stuff going on inside of there, but like LinkedIn is just, it's so awesome for me and like and it's really where I, guess. I actually enjoy being the most for social media because mm -hmm. it's just like hey we're professionals we're talking about our careers we're talking about things that make a difference that in our, in our work mm -hmm. and it's none of the other stuff and so I don't have to deal with like you know just like people don't post their uh, at least I don't see them like yeah they're like or you takes. avoid them a little yeah, more yeah yeah hot <laughs> takes on this tv show and like eh, you know like okay cool like <laughs> in the right setting but like but when I'm just like hey I just want yeah. to do work related professional stuff find out things that are related to AI or to teaching or whatever yeah. else it is so it's more I am super better. into LinkedIn. Yeah, it's, it's much more. So, so maybe you and I go through the phase where you get into this tool first and then I reject it, reject it, reject it. <laughs> and then I finally give in because this happened with GIF and GIF. Oh, yeah. Of you're course, a GIF, I don't know which one now. I settled on. <laughs> I'm a GIF now. <laughs> and then it happened with Instagram. Yeah. Uh, so maybe LinkedIn's in the future for me. I don't know. I'm not rejecting it 100% yet, but... Uh, <laughs> but then uh so Ray, i also kind of had a uh, so if there are listeners out there who've sort of been weighing on making the transition and are afraid of leaving their teacher cohort or their followers or whatever it is that they cultivated there um what made it maybe we should talk a little bit about what made it easier for us to make that mm. transition um I know that for you and I, we always talk about what it is that we want to stand for. Um, so the the moral compass or mm -hmm. our gut feeling always drives that first. Right. And then you and I always, you know, I don't know what to think about this, but here's here's what I think. And then we sort of talk it through. Um, usually, I you confirm a, a lot of like my gut feelings. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think what, what made it. Go ahead. Oh no, go please start. I was going to say what made it easier for me is that I could talk to you about it mm. and say it without any, any judgment. And I think that I'm glad you said that at the beginning of this, of this um, show that it's, it's uh we're not trying to look down on anyone who decides to stay or anything like that, but it, it's a personal decision. And it's um if you, if you decide that you're going to go cold Turkey, but you're not ready, you're going to go back. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you're trying to make a change, um, it's got, I, I just think you have to be prepared. And I think one of the ways that uh, we prepared is we were deciding on whether to keep posts up because we've created this history of beautiful educational posts. But then at the same time, how many millions of posts are added every day yeah. that, you know, unless you wanted to search archives for something specific, chances are one post gets seen that day and perhaps another day and then maybe never again yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> by that's an audience. Reality. I mean, it's nice to think that like we've added or contributed or to, you know, people's conversations, but I think that was mostly mm -hmm. at a certain point in time, you know, and it doesn't really, right. it doesn't really hold for a long history, even though it's all there. So one thing, one you can do is go download your archive in Twitter. And there are actually some mm -hmm. ways I haven't done it myself yet. It's, it's not, super easy but you can actually then take that archive and put it up on your website so I've seen some people go here's my mm -hmm. entire Twitter archive as like you know a website mm -hmm. page or whatever and so they you can get access to it that way if you want to kind of keep those ideas in there um, mm -hmm. but the truth is like you know we're not huge I mean we have a few thousand followers or whatever else it is but like so that's small potatoes, right? Like, I mean, yeah. in the, in the big, in the real scheme of things. And so a lot of people are like, well, I've got, you know, 10,000 followers or whatever. It's like, yeah, okay. But like, it doesn't really mean but anything. the connection. Yeah. The connections aren't there. Um, I mean, a lot of the times the people that I, that I did meet from Twitter, I now interact with them on Instagram because they're most likely also posting on Instagram and we do have back and forth conversations that aren't uh, public as a, as a, you know, as a Twitter post, mm -hmm. but I do reach out to them and yeah. I do tell them, Hey, there's a job, have a job fair here, send it to your people. And so, yeah, I still connect with the people that matter. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then for me, it was a slow fade out of Twitter too. Like, I, cause you and I were talking about, I mean, if you go back and listen to the like archive year, of the yeah. last year, we were like, Oh, what do we do? Uh, like, and it was just like, after Mastodon, we sort of talked about it every time at the end. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, and so it, it's it hasn't been an easy thing, right? Because because it's no, like it hasn't we're, been easy. We're creatures of habit, and we know what we've liked. And so when that changes, we're resistant to say mm -hmm. that it's actually changed, even though it has. And so, um, so anyways, what I ended up doing was I found an app called uh, mm -hmm. Redactor. Uh, Redact. On the Mac. Redact. Yeah, Redactor. Yeah, sorry, Redact on the Mac. Um, and basically, you can click on it. It can go in and just delete all the old posts you have, or uh, it can delete, you know, everything that you've done, or you can choose a timeline. So, so I went in and just deleted everything except for my most recent post. And just my most recent post just says, Hey, here's where you can find me else in, in other words, sorry, in other places. Um, and that was the end of it. And um, you did it on a Mac and I was able to download the app directly to my phone and I just did everything from my phone okay. and i guess the thing that i liked about it that that pushed me to do the whole thing is that you could select whether you wanted to save certain tweets and not delete them or whether you wanted to save certain um any tweet by a particular person and so it made it a little gave me choices so it wasn't all like 100 percent deletion mm -hmm. so i kind of did it in slow like a few days at a time and then i was like no I don't need to keep this. I already deleted everything else. Am I really going to log in to go back and look at my bookmarks? Probably no, because if I have it in a bookmark, <laughs> probably save it somewhere else too. So um, Redact is free on my um, Apple phone. I don't know if for Mac you had to pay for it, yeah, it but the free version worked for me. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that made it also easy because you don't have to pay. A lot of other uh, programs ask you to pay for however many tweets you're going to delete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it took a little while to find it, so it is there though. Um, okay, so uh, we don't really have a clear answer as to where we will be for definite in the future, but uh, you <laughs> can always okay. find us on diesel.org, and then you uh, will find <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, we're we're, out there. <laughs> we're in in places, I guess. Um, and so please feel free to reach out, keep the community alive, but uh, it's going to have to be a different view of what it was from the past. All right, it is time for our fun finds. And this time I have Nablus Olive Oil Soap. Mm -hmm. And this is a company that a college friend actually founded. And uh, recently I, I was searching for her because she's an orator. Uh, she writes poetry. Mm -hmm. And um, I found that she had uh, 
gotten this project off and it's successful and it's out there. And so you can buy, you know, the holidays are coming up and you can purchase hundred percent olive oil soap that's traditionally made since the 10th century in Palestine. So, um, Hmm. Navalis olive oil soap. Okay. Uh, mine is goma dofu. So, um, so Ooh. this is uh, sesame. Yeah, se- tofu? sesame tofu, right? Uh-huh. And so what we found uh. Uh, is as a dessert. So this is not really traditionally a dessert, but we found figured out a way to make this into a dessert. So basically, it's this um, se- sesame tofu, and then instead of uh, covering it with like the the sesame dressing or whatever, we were covering it in uh, this Japanese black honey that you can buy, and then the uh, mm-hmm. the powder that you find on uh, the, the dango, the, the like the little uh, dango, mm-hmm. the yeah, dango, yeah. the the that uh, that brown powder. You know, that you, oh, yeah. what is it called? It's. Uh, I'll think of it. I'm Keep drawing going. a blank right now, but anyways, you. you oh you, yeah, me too. You, so you put that on, and so that's been our little dessert instead of like super sweet sugary <laughs> things, and it's actually turned out to be really yes. nice. Um, and so I don't know if you can get this in the states or other places, but if you can find it, Goma Dofu, uh, it's really outstanding. All right, um, we are on YouTube. That's our latest uh, dump. <laughs> our latest episode dump will be there. Oh, great, great phrasing, oh, can... great, great promotion. That's our dump. <laughs> you can go to YouTube for our dump. <laughs> Share the show, buy us a coffee, support us through Patreon, leave a review, or give us a shout out. Um, we have still one of a kind diesel pins. You can win one. Make sure to tag us on whatever platform it is that you leave a shout out. For show notes and other episodes, check out diesel.org slash 92. That's the number 92. And you can listen to us at Voice Ed Canada. You cannot find us on Twitter. <laughs> yes, yeah, like that's where we're going to change this language. Uh, you cannot find us on Twitter. You can find us on other social media platforms. I am typically, I, I think everywhere, I'm at Brent G. Warner. And I'm at pixie underscore pixie ixy underscore pixy on most of the platforms Mm -hmm. in swahili thank you is asante asante for tuning in to the diesel podcast